Today, we solve a problem that I've had ever since I started 3D printing. So I've spent a reasonable amount of time learning how to use various different CAD softwares over the years, and currently I use Onshape for all my parametric CAD needs. But resources like Tinkercad are also a good option, and it's great to have so many free options available. But by and large, I like creating 3D models. Now maybe some of you have experienced this issue and you like creating 3D models as well, but CAD programs tend to let you down in one area in particular. When it comes to organic models, parametric CAD programs just aren't going to take you nearly as far. That's Blender territory and I'm not ready to learn that. And this is my issue. If I get somebody requesting me to make them a rubber ducky with a biker vest on, what do I do? Yes, that was a legitimate request that I got from a paying customer. But honestly, for something like that, I don't even know where to start. If I want to make a cute little animal for my kid to play with or something like that, I'm left relying on free models on the internet, which isn't bad because there's a lot available, but I'm never going to be able to get the level of control that I get when I design something myself. Well, that all changes today, and I don't have to learn a single new program or spend any time figuring out new skills. Today, we're partnering with Hyper3D, and we get to explore their model generation program, Rodin. At its most basic, you give it a text prompt, and this will generate a 3D model based on what you've typed in using AI. It's science and magic, and I don't fully understand it, but here are some of the things I was able to make, just by typing a few words. First of all, this is a cheese dog. That's all it is, there's nothing to it. We have a dog named Queso, we call him Cheese Dog. I typed in Cheese Dog, this is what the thing made. And really, I didn't do anything other than that. I typed in the two words, the model was generated, I threw it into my slicer, and I hit print. Inside of two minutes, I had a print started on a model that didn't exist like seconds ago. Another thing I wanted to try out was a cute version of Spyro the Dragon. So again, I typed in a prompt, I hatched the model, I colored it up a little bit, and I began printing it. Now I wanted to see how well my new H2D from Bamboo could do resolving some small models, so I decided to take this one and use it as a little bit of a torture test, and I made them really tiny. But additionally, I wanted to stretch the legs on the machine and see how it would do printing out a batch of them, so I had a handful on the plate at the same time. And it looks pretty good! With that model's success, I jumped into a different model, a different character from a different video game from my childhood, Crash Bandicoot. Now after prompting it, this time I decided to take my time and regenerate the model a handful of times, cycling through to see what else it would give me even though I didn't change the text prompts. And after refreshing it a couple of times, I found something that was suitable, so I decided to spend a bit of time coloring this model too, before sending it to the printer. And it was cool because this is like a six color model and it had so much less waste than it would have had on my X1 Carbon because it's got dual nozzles on the H2D and as a result it printed a lot faster as well. But of course, the thing that started my journey in the first place, the Biker Ducky. Now this one took a little bit of finessing when I was typing in the text prompt, but after a few different stabs and revisions of what I wrote in there, I was able to get this. Now again, I threw some color on the model to suit what I was trying to accomplish, and I moved around the filament from my two AMSs that I had hooked into the H2D based on Bamboo's recommendations in the slicer to minimize waste and save time once again. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, one fully AI generated custom rubber ducky wearing a biker vest with a biker hat and some sunglasses. These are things that are way outside of my abilities and now they're firmly within reach. And the longest part was coloring the model rather than generating the model. And that's huge. All right, so I mentioned that these are printed on my new H2D, and I'm very excited about the machine. Don't get me wrong. There will be an unboxing video coming out soon, but for this video, we're going to start shaking it down using Rodin to print out a couple of these models. Because when my new friends at Hyper3D offered to collaborate, I was so interested that I wanted to get on this project before I got into the H2D breakdown video. So like I mentioned, Hyper3D has this tool called Rodin. It's a 3D model generating application that cranks out whatever model you can think of using the power of AI. But interestingly enough, Rodin is actually plugged in directly to the Maker Lab portion of Maker World. And this is the part that makes it super easy for anybody to access the ability to generate these kinds of models, whether they have CAD experience or 3D modeling experience or 3D printing experience even. Anybody can use this. So if we go on Maker World and we hit the Maker Lab tab, 
You can find this print mod section. From there, we're directed to a UI that allows us to generate a 3D model. Now we can use an existing image to give the AI reference for what we want to generate, but I focused mainly on the text input segment. So this is where I came up with my cute version of Spyro. And basically that's the entire prompt that I gave it. Cute version of Spyro the Dragon. And this is what it gave me. The first option was a pretty good one, so I decided to go with that and I hatched the model. So from there, the workflow is pretty straightforward and that's good for somebody like me that's a beginner to this whole kind of world. And that's kind of a recurring theme here. The average user may not know anything about AI generation and they shouldn't need to know anything about AI generation. So the hatching process takes a few minutes and from there you get to edit some of the colorization of your model. I simplified mine a little bit by having fewer colors in the model, but I was gonna clean it up in Bamboo Studio after the fact like they recommend anyway. At this point we get different format options, but when we open up the 3MF that we just downloaded, bam! All your colors are already there, just like when you generated it. Now of course I was gonna go in and touch a few things up before doing a test print, but honestly this got us like 90% of the way there in like five minutes. Guys, I want to be very clear here. We're living in the future. This is future stuff. Hey, do you want to win an H2D? Well, Roden's going to give three of them away, and all you got to do is generate a model on their site, share it on X using the hashtag Roden 3D Printing, and by the end of April, you might just win yourself one of these printers. Go check it out. What do you got to lose? I think I might be exempt, but I might still try and do it. Now the Printmon feature in Maker Lab is super good, but it's not the only way to access this form of model generation. So if we go to the Hyper 3D site directly, we can get right on Rodin and do the same thing. But there's a few advantages by doing it this way. First off, there's a few different ways that you can create your models besides just an image or text-based generation. But beyond that, a super huge advantage is the load times tend to be quite a bit quicker here. Also, in general, with every step, there's quite a few more options available. So if you want more granular control over your 3D model generation, this is probably the way to do it. Though the advantage to using the Printmon application in Maker Lab is its simplicity. Anybody can go on there and access 3D model generation without getting bogged down in some of the details that you have access to here with Roden. But if you are looking to dig a lot deeper and use some of those other options available, this is the way you should go. So for example, if you're working with a text prompt directly here in Roden, you can generate the model just like you would hatch it on MakerLab. But you also get access to several different types of geometry and file types. Now that's just one example of something you get access to on the site, but even more basic than that, using Roden gives you access to different kinds of models as well, or different categories of models. Let me explain. So when using the Printmon app on MakerLab, you have access to the super powerful model generator that focuses on cutesy little monsters. And with Rodin, you get access to those same little cute monsters as well. But you can also specify for everyday objects, where on the Printmon app, you don't necessarily get that. It's more biased towards the cute little monsters. So it's safe to say the walls are a little bit lower here and it gives you access to different kinds of model generation altogether. And since I have access to whatever I can fathom with the simple stroke of a key, I made Cheese Dog. Yep, after printing out this single color pink cheese dog to familiarize myself with the workflow on Roden, I moved on to the Crash Bandicoot model I was speaking about. And again, that allowed me to explore a little bit more while focusing on something a little less ridiculous. This is when I experimented with slightly varied text prompts and re-rolling the dice a handful of times to really hone in the model that I was generating. I even selected the high poly geometry option just because it was available and I could. But ultimately I think that made the process a bit more involved because the model was so much more detailed that when it came time to color it, it took a lot longer. So it's something to keep in mind. But with this thing fully colored up, I let the print run overnight so I could wake up to another fully custom 3D model that didn't exist before I typed some words on a computer. Now, if you've seen this video, or this video, you know that support material is garbage and it should be avoided at all costs. Well, when you're printing organic figures like this, 
it's kind of hard to avoid. Luckily, we got this brand spanking new machine from Bamboo that offers two nozzles, baby. So the H2D specifically is helpful in this situation because we get better control options for our support material. Like if we load up the one nozzle with the primary filament color and then the other nozzle with a support specific filament, we can get the most clean overhangs possible without the need to swap between the two filaments. No contamination, no wasted time, you just print your model, supports and all. Finally, I can fix my relationship with support material and print like people have been doing for so long. Well, I didn't think to do that while I was printing these models, so I actually didn't employ that method at all in this video. So I printed my last model the old-fashioned way still. But that all said, the default settings for supports on Bamboo Studio were just fine to get this newbie started up on his models that needed support generation. So finally this was it. The rubber ducky in the biker vest that I generated after some very careful text prompt massaging. Once you work with it a bit and get a model that you're truly happy with, it's pretty easy to get into the workflow of hit and generate and moving through the options on the next page. Now this page is where the next layer of refinement can be found and you truly do have quite a few options available. Because again you can roll the dice and regenerate your model a little bit finer than when you were refreshing the model previously. And you can do this quite a bit to really refine your model that little bit further. This is also the point where you get access to a full 360 view of your model, so you kind of get your first preview of the thing instead of just an image. But once you're done with this part of the process, you can finally commit some of those precious credits and generate the model you've been working on. Now I feel like this is a good time to mention that this program is available in a free capacity. And by that I mean when you make an account you are awarded credits. Now each time you finally commit to a model after you 3D generated it and did all your tweaking and stuff, that's when you use some of those available tokens. But it basically equates to like 10 free models or so. And with that in mind there's ways you can earn more credits, like referring friends for example. But if you are looking to generate models more regularly or use them for business purposes, you can subscribe to one of their monthly plans. I'm super stoked to have the opportunity to work with Rodin a little bit more and honestly I only just scratched the surface of what this thing's capable of. As it applies to 3D printing I look forward to exploring it even further and maybe developing some new products for my Etsy page. Anyway, thanks to Hyper3D for sponsoring this video. If you want to look at their offerings a little bit further check the link below. Also if you want to download the cheese dog model for some reason I've got that and all the other models that I made in this video linked in the description. Though I would not recommend downloading the cheese dog model because why would you? Bye.